my name's Alacy and this is Kales. Today we're talking about a barbering service called straight blading. We're going to be doing it on balloons. We both have the straight blade in our hands right now. This straight blade does not have a razor inside of it, so we're both safe. Let's talk about a few of the different parts of a straight blade. This black portion here is called the scale. It's made from a number of different materials, including wood, porcelain, and this one's plastic. The edge corner right here, that little black part that hangs off, is called the tang. The tang is where our pinky rests. It's the same as the shears in the past video. We have the toe, which is the end top, the heel, where it starts to dip down. When it starts to dip down, that's called the shoulder. The long metal portion right here is called the shank. The edge is the sharp portion where our blade would be in, and the top is the spine. When we want to hold our straight blade, what we're going to do is we're going to have the black portion, our scale, facing down. So our sharp portion would be down and inside of it. I'm going to put my pinky on top of here and I start lifting everything up. Now my pinky still stays on top. Oh, I know it looks a little confusing, but we're going to get this together. This is the end goal. I don't think that's right. Let's try again together. Close it back up. Oh, you've just got yours upside down. There we go. Let's start opening it up. That's right. Yeah. Keep opening a little bit more. And now you can stick your pinky there. Perfect. Your other fingers are going to go underneath that black part. Perfect. And my thumb goes right under here. And that portion, remember, we called that the shoulder. Right under there. So now I've got our hands in the correct position. We're getting ready to straight blade here. Let's close this up though and talk about where our blade would go. Give that a shot. This one's cool. It slides open. Once you slide open that inside, it's got some little, they look like little clips. I'll show you up close. And that's where the blade would get set inside. I've got a blade open here. I'm gonna show you where it would be set if we were using a blade. And it would just set inside, then you would have this insert put back inside and lined up. And it just fits right in. Now my blade is in there. Today, we won't use a blade because this is day one of straight blading. We've got our gloves for you. We've got our aprons on and our masks to ensure safety to ourselves and our clientele. We're going to be doing it on a balloon today though. Instead of using shaving cream, since shaving cream is expensive, we're going to use some conditioner. Once you got your gloves on, I'll hand you a balloon. There you go. And I've got a balloon as well. This would be our client's face. We don't want to injure our client's face, so we're not going to pop the balloon today is our goal. Let's rub some of that around a little bit. You don't have to go too big, just a little bit. And I've got a clean towel down here to wipe our hands. When straight blading, as long as we go straight, you are safe. If you go sideways, backwards, or up, you're going to injure someone. So we want to go in a straight motion. So again, when we're opening it, that black portion is down. The black portion flips all the way around. Our pinky sits on the tang. The rest of our fingers go on top of that spine and our thumb is underneath. Beautifully done. Well done. Now, we want to go to a 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle is slightly angled back towards ourselves. 90 is up and down. If we go up and down, we are going to end up hurting the balloon or our client's face. I'm going to show you here on an angle so both of you guys can see. I've got that nice 45 degree angle. I don't have to stretch any skin, follow any hair growth. It's a balloon. We're just practicing the angle today. Pulling downwards in a nice even motion. 
Once you lift off, you want to wipe off that shaving cream on the towel. I've got a towel down below. Then we can go back in for another swipe. Nice and even. If you feel like you're getting stuck and there's no slip, I've got a water bottle here we can spritz and spray. Go ahead and give it a shot. Wow, like a pro already. Impressive. Pull all that off. So what do we do when we're all done with our straight blade and we finished our shave? Well, we wanna sanitize our straight blade. We're gonna take it apart, rinse off both portions, give it a good scrub down with soap and place it into sanitizer for a minimum of 10 minutes. If we did have a blade in there, the blade would go into the sharp spin and remain in the sharp spin until it gets taken to a pharmacy or another facility to dispose of it. Thank you very much for being my, my helper today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Hi, my partner's left. So I'm wanting to talk about a few of the other types of straight blades that are out there. This is a straight blade that I use most common at work. And it's a very heavy straight blade. This one is made out of stainless steel. It's a very thick and heavy straight blade. I got shaving cream all over my hands. So the scale, it moves a little bit less than the other one did. It has a lot more tension to it and that makes it easier to hold on to. Especially sometimes when you're straight blading, you have to hold it in a different way. This is called the straight method. And when you do this method, it's often used in hard to get to places like the bottom of the neck or corners behind the ear, where if you had it bent, the scale would get in your way, would get up in an ear, or maybe you can't get down the chest into a proper mo motion. With this straight blade, what I do is there's some little indents right here. I push down on my thumb and over, and that's how I open this one. The blade normally sits right in here to close it back up, set it down on top and push back to the side. To get the blade in and out, you can squish it and it opens it up. This is a different type of straight blade. The common straight blade that you have probably seen in movies or TV shows is one that you have to hone. That means you have to use a strap and wet it in order to sharpen the blade. Those blades are blades used for a single person only. The two blades that I demonstrated today and have talked about are ones that you can use in a regular service that are equal with industry standards. We do that because every time you use a little tiny blade, you need to make sure you dispose of it correctly, then sanitize the casing so each client has the same service. We wanna have things equal across the border for everyone and as safe as possible. The benefits of a hot shave are closeness, cleanliness, sharpness, less chance of ingrown, ingrown hair, exfoliation, and relaxation. We wanna make sure we dispose of those, shape, those sharps properly and correctly and always use our barriers including our mask, our gloves, our apron, and caping and draping properly our client. Sanitation really matters during a hot shave because there is a lot of risks during a hot shave, including blood exchange and as well bacteria. Things grow when they're wet, especially around blades. If you aren't maintaining a safe environment, your client isn't safe. So together, all these straight blades, when I'm done using them today, I'm gonna to take them apart, I'm gonna rinse them off, I'm gonna put them in sanitizer, and then I'm going to package them. Straight blades at my shop get packaged into what's called a Novel. It's a self-sealing sterilization pouch. Once it's sterilized, I'll pull this tab, I'll insert the straight blade into the package, and then it's ready to be used. 
The nice part about this is I can have an already loaded straight blade. That means I already have the blade inside of it. When it's in this package, I can write loaded or has a blade, contains razor, sharp, something that indicates that there is a sharp inside of here. Then the next person going to pull a straight blade is knowledgeable about what's going on. When I'm ready to use it, I rip down the sides. I pull out my fresh, clean, and sanitized straight blade, and I'm ready to use it. A great way to practice is on balloons, but balloons doesn't really effectively demonstrate what a real face is like. In real life, we need to be able to stretch the skin. Skin has a lot of elasticity to it that a balloon right now doesn't have. The older the person, the more elasticity they usually have. So the farther you're gonna to have to stretch the skin. With some people, you gotta stretch the skin all the way from the bottom of the neck up. With other people, sometimes it's a matter of just getting them to move and turn their head. The type of straight blading we were talking about today is mainly done on faces, but you can also do eyebrows too, sideburns, back inside of the head, back of the neck. I've even straight bladed my arms before. A great way to practice is honestly blading on yourself. Knowing the amount of pressure needing to be used, using a balloon is great, but practicing on your own can show you personally what the right amount of tension and pressure would be. This one doesn't have a current blade in it, but if I was blading on myself, I don't wanna push so hard that I'm cutting into my skin. I wanna push just hard enough so I'm peeling off those hairs, lifting them up and off. Straight blading's fun. It starts off really scary. It's a little bit challenging, but once you get there, it's a very satisfying experience. Thanks so much for watching my video on an intro to straight blading. I hope you learned something about straight blades today that you didn't know before, and I enjoyed having discussions about it with you.